Leviticus 25 to 26. So we're going to be reading Leviticus 25, 1 to 3. Leviticus chapter 25. And the Torah portion this week is called Behar. Means on the mountain. On the mount. And we're going to read verse 1. We're going to read 1 in Hebrew. And then we read 1, 2, and 3 in English. See? So, on, on the pointer there now it says... Leviticus chapter 25, we thank you again for all those who are watching us online. Uh, we are here at the Congregation of Truth, Kahal Emet. So we read verse 1. It says, that one there says, Bahidabar Yahweh El Moshe. Bahar, that's the Torah portion, or Behar, right? Okay, Behar Sinai Lemur. That says, and the Lord spoke unto Moses in Mount Sinai, saying, Verse 2, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye come into the land which I give you, then shall the land keep a Sabbath unto the Lord. 3. Six years thou shalt sow thy field, and six years thou shalt prune thy vineyard, and gather in the produce thereof. But let's read verse 4. But in the seventh year shall be a Shabbat, a solemn rest for the land, a Sabbath unto the Lord. Thou shalt neither sow thy field, nor prune thy vineyard. So the Lord doesn't only give us Shabbat for us as people, but he gave the land a Shabbat to him. Amen? He said every seven years the land must rest and let it reproduce its nutrients. And that's the seventh year. And then it goes seven, seven. The fifteenth year is called the year of jubilee and that's where the next reading comes from in the year of jubilee yeshua came to nazareth where he was brought up so miss phyllis will read luke 4 verses 16 21 okay luke 4 16 and 21 this is where yeshua came on the year of jubilee and proclaimed liberty as he said he fulfills it so let's read in leviticus 20 Leviticus 4 and then we will read finish reading Psalm and we'll close with the Torah portion came to Nazareth I'm reading Leviticus 16 through 21 I mean Luke 4 I'm sorry Luke 4 16 to 21 um, and he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as his custom, up to read. And the book of the prophet Isaiah, and he opened the book and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set free those who are oppressed, to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. In line with the Torah Porsche. Yeah, that's okay. We got it good. So at this time, we're going to read the book of Psalm. Yes. Psalm 105, 1 to 10. That's the Psalm for the Torah Porsche and Behar today. Yes. Psalm 105, verses 1 to 10 said, Give thanks to the Lord and proclaim his greatness. Let the whole world know what he has done. Sing to him, yes, sing his praises. Tell everyone about his wonderful deeds. Exult in his holy name, rejoice, 
you who worship the Lord. Search for the Lord and his and for his strength. Continually seek him. Remember the wonders he has performed, his miracles, and the rulings he has given. You children of his servant Abraham, you descendants of Jacob, his chosen ones. He is the Lord our God. His justice is seen throughout the land. He always stands by his covenant, the commitment he made to a thousand generations. This is the covenant he made with Abraham and the oath he swore to Isaac. He confirmed, he confirmed it to Jacob as a decree and to the people of Israel as a never-ending covenant. Hallelujah. Praise God. Offering as we prepare for the word. Maybe they can put Okay, while offering is being collected, we are preparing. Again, we want to remind you again that next week we'll be doing Revelation 11. We'll be halfway through the book of Revelation. And it's not too late to start inviting friends to come and listen to the last half of Revelation. And we can do one, one person bring one. And that will double what we have here today. Amen? That's how it goes. Amen. So this time we're going to do the... The finish. Yes. Okay, so this time we're going to continue in Revelation chapter 10. We did Revelation 1 through 10, and now we're doing Revelation to 10. We're using the scripture to interpret scripture. We're not doing anything of our own interpretations, but we are letting the Bible interpret itself. We did Revelation 1 through 9 so far, showing what those things mean. And we need that fear because the battle belongs to the Lord and everything belongs to Him. And once we belong to Him, we need that fear. So we're going to see what Revelation chapter 10 is talking about. So we have the interlude. We're almost there. In Revelation 10, we're going to be talking about the, the scroll. That's what we're going to be focusing on to see what that scroll is. And then next week, we'll do Revelation chapter 11, which talks about the two witnesses. And so, before we continue, we're going to pray so we can get some understanding, okay? Oh, kind Father, we ask that you open our understanding as we open your words. In the name of Yeshua, we pray. Amen. Okay, so we move on to the screen. We're going to do a quick summary of the trumpets that we did a couple of weeks ago to see what was being done. So we move on. Okay, I hope we can see it there. Now, we did the trumpets before, and we're going to see something that happened with those trumpets. Hope we can read it. Uh, it said the trumpets reverse the work God did at creation. So everything that God did at creation, he is breaking it up. Because mankind is not taking care of his, of his creation. Okay? So on the screen we see the first day. The first day we know God said, let there be light. And God divided the light from darkness. Right? And the first trumpet, what did he do? He says, he the day shone not for the third part of it, and, it and, and, and in the night likewise. So you see, in the first day he made light, and then on the first trumpet, he is taking out that which gives light. On the first day of creation, God said, let there be light, and God divided the light from the darkness. Right? And one of the trumpets, he says, let not the day shine not for the third part of it, and the night likewise. Yes. It's corresponding with creation. Yes. So it's going the opposite. Yes, is bringing destruction the opposite way. Right. So on the second day of creation, God said, let there be a firmament in the middle of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God called the firmament heaven. So you see one of the trumpets, he says, and there arose a smoke out of the pit 
as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke. So the firmament, he divide the waters from the waters and call the firmament heaven. And so he's doing that destruction on the second day. Next. Okay, some, some folks writing. Those who are watching, you can take screenshots. We are doing the book of Revelation. Okay, so on the third day, he says, God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree, right? And while the trumpet says in Revelation 8 and verse 7, the third part of the trees was burned up, and all the green grass was burned up. What is that? This is just a summary. So that the seven trumpets in Revelation corresponds to the, the days of creation. We did the first six trumpets in Revelation chapter 9. We're not touching the seven trumpet until Revelation 11. I saw the Bible does it, so we skip it. And we're not touching the seven trumpet until Revelation 11. On the fourth day of cre creation, he says, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, to give light on the earth. Right? In Revelation 8, 12, it says, The third part of the sun was smitten, and the moon and the stars, as the third part of them was darkened. See the, see the same similarity? On the third day, he created the sun, and then on this third trumpet, He's, the, he's causing destruction on the sun, which also is a spiritual significance representing his people who are supposed to have light and they did not do it, so he's bringing them darkness. Okay, next. Okay, so on the fifth day of creation, God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creatures, right? And we notice one of the trumpets says, The third part of the sea became blood, and the third part of the creatures in which were in the sea had life died. So the Lord is taking out his creation. And we know at the end he's going to recreate. Amen. And on the sixth day God said, let us make man in our image. And let him multiply and replenish the earth. And one of the trumpets says, by these three was the third part of men killed. By fire, by smoke, and by brimstone. So he's destroying mankind, those who refuse to follow him. At the end time. So the warning is there for us. So with that said, we're going to move on now to Revelation chapter 10. Just a minute. Someone is writing down. Okay. So for all those who are watching on Spirico, we thank you again for rejoining us. And we hope you stay put for the study. We are doing Revelation chapter 10 here at the Congregation of Truth, Kahal Emet in Florida, Kissimmee, BVL, Buenaventura. 34743 is zip code. So if you have time, you can stop by. We start here 11.30 a.m. every Saturday. Congregation of Truth, the scripture of truth.net. That's our website. And you can see more videos. If you did not catch us with Revelation 1 through 9, you can see us on the video on the website, the scripture of truth.net. Amen. So we go on to now Revelation chapter 10. Revelation chapter 10. So let's read together Revelation chapter 10. It says, then I saw another mighty angel coming down from heaven. And what did he say? Can we see? Yes, can we read together? What's on the screen? Revelation 10. Miss is writing. Yeah, let's read it. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Coming down from heaven, he was robed in a cloud with a rainbow above his head. His face was like the sun, and his legs were like fiery pillars. So we're going to find out what this is all about. So let's see this, this angel coming down from heaven now. Uh-huh. Okay, there's the angel coming down from heaven. Now remember we said that the word angel means messenger. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a literal angel. Right? We're going to prove that this angel is Yeshua, so to speak. Right? Not that he's an angel, but the word angel means, we, we discussed that in Revelation 1, it means messenger. And we know that Yeshua is the chief messenger from heaven, right? Okay, so he said this, he was robed in a cloud. Why a cloud? Why the rainbow? And why was his leg fiery? Okay, so we're going to look at these definitions now. Okay, so we look now. In, in, let's look at the word cloud. Here in Revelation 
<coughs> 1 and verse 7. Can someone find that as I change the mic? And then... Revelation, 1, so. Revelation 1 7 said, um, Look, he comes with the clouds of heaven, and everyone will see him, even those who pierce him. And all the nations of the world will mourn for him. Yes, amen. Amen. Revelation chapter 1, 7 said he would come with clouds, right? Yeah, that's why he was had a cloud when he came down. So what? The rainbow. The rainbow, it says. Revelation 4 and verse 3. Yes, Revelation 4 and verse 3. Revelation 4 and verse 3. On the sitting on the throne was a brilliant, as brilliant as gemstones, like jas jasper and carnelian, and the glow of an emerald circled his throne like a rainbow. Right. Right. So we see this rainbow is a representative of that. And the rainbow is also symbolizing uh, covenant. Remember, he said it to Abraham, uh, Noah. This is this is the, after the flood. This is my covenant with you. All right. So, and the sun, Revelation one six. And before the throne, there were was something like a sea of grass, like crystals, in in the center. And around the throne, four living creatures full of eyes in front and behind. Revelation 1. Let me see if I have the right. Uh, no, you could be right. I may have the wrong scripture there. I was looking for one that mentioned the sun. Uh, but the Bible does show that the, Yeshua is called the son of righteousness. Uh, right? In, I think it's in Micah. Amen. So let's do, what about the fire now? Exodus thirteen twenty one. Exodus 13, 21. 13, 1, 3, and verse 21. Yes, Exodus 13. The Lord was going before them in a day to lead them on the way and in a pillar of fire by night to give them light that they might travel by day and by night right yes by fire right we know the lord go by cloud and by fire so when that angel um came down with the cloud and the fire we know it represents the throne of god yeshua is coming amen that's what it means okay so we move on okay now, then in verse 2 says, he was holding, a, when the angel came down, he was holding a scroll in his hand. Now, we're going to talk about that scroll and see what that is right now. So, we're gonna, we will move on and see what that scroll is all about. So, we'll move on next. And that's the scroll in his hand. Okay, verse 2. And he had in his hand a little book open, and he set his right foot upon the sea and his left foot on the earth. So, the angel came down, and he was maybe standing like this, one on the earth, one on the sea to show that I am in control, right? He's in control. But what does the Bible say that means? He has his foot and right hand and, and land and sea. Okay, so we're going to see what that means. We move on. Okay, feet on the earth and the sea. Now in Micah chapter 1, in verse three, uh, 3 to 5, it says, For behold, the Lord cometh forth out of his place and will come down and tread upon the high places of the earth and the mountain shall be molten under him. Yes. And the valley shall be cleft as wax before the fire. And as water that are poured down a deep place. For the transgression of Jacob is all this. And for the sins of the house of Israel. Right? So when Yeshua comes down, it, it's a picture of judgment. Remember remember, he says, I think it's Zechariah. And in Zechariah he says, um, when he comes, he's going to stand at the Mount of Olives. And when he when he, and his feet is gonna stand and it's gonna split. 
right? When he comes to sick. Yes. And most of also mean melt. Yes. Yeah. Because remember, when Jesus comes in, he's, he's like a, he's a person with fire now. He's a consuming fire. Yes. Yeah, yes, exactly. For the sins, he says, for the transgressions of Jacob is all this. And for the sins of the house of Israel. And it also represented the sins of all of us. He's coming to deal with judgment. Amen. Next. So that's why he has his feet on the earth and the sea to show that it's universal. Nobody's escaping. Land and sea. Amen. Now this angel now cried with a loud voice as when a lion roared. And when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. So this is deep things going on in heaven. Seven thunders uttered their voices when the angel shouted. So now remember we said everything that's in the New Testament is also in the Tanakh. In the Old Testament. So, so John was taking a picture from the Tanakh. So we're going to look into the Tanakh and see if there's a similar um, wording where it says uh, the voice cried and it roars. Amen? So let's go to the next script and see what it says here. Okay. In Job 37, 2 to 5 now. Can we read that together? Let me hear you read it so I can hear. And those who are watching, you can read along. Where re where you might, might be able to hear the people reading. Okay, they have the mic there. Yes. Or you can take the mic too. That's, that's what, so at least everybody can hear where they're reading. Gonna all okay. be reading together yes. from the screen. Job 37, yes. two, uh, to five. two through yes. five. Hear, hear attentively the noise, noise of, of his, his voice. voice and the sound that go out of his mouth. He directed it under the, the whole, whole heaven, heaven and his, his lightning, lightning unto, unto the ends of the, of the earth. earth. After it, a voice roared. Roar. You see that? Uh huh. He thundereth with the voice of his excellency, and he will not say them with his voice in his heart. God thundereth marvelously with his voice. Great things doeth he, which we cannot comprehend. Amen. Amen. Go back to that slide again so we can see what we're talking about. So his voice thundereth. So here John is using the same imagery. Right, he says, and he cried with a loud voice as when a lion roared. And he says, voice roared. Right? And when he had uh, and when he had cried, seven thunder uttered their voices. Right? They were saying, yes, we're ready to do what we need to do. Now, let's see what the, the seven thunder said. Next. And when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, John heard everything he was, he, he was hearing all these things now. He says, and I was about to write, and the voice from heaven said unto me, Seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered and write them not. I wonder why he's not supposed to write those. We were not supposed to know what, 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 that, what, what that was. Many people speculate about what that was, but we here, we don't speculate. The Bible says he never write it. He didn't write it, so we can't speculate as to what it was. You know, we'll be in a big problem if we try to speculate and say that is it. Amen? But in the Bible also, there are there are places in the Bible, and we're just going to quote one today, where the Bible said the same thing. Things were given, especially to Daniel, and he says, no, I can't tell you that yet. Not, he's not ready to hear it yet. We're going to go that now. Let's see. You're comparing scripture with scripture. So it's not for us to know yet. In Daniel 8, 26, Daniel was given a vision, and he wanted to know the vision. And the Lord said unto him, let's, do, let's read again. Daniel 8, 26, he says, the vision of the evening and the morning which was told, it is true. Wherefore, shut up the vision, for it shall be for many days. Not going to get the explanation. Same like the one before. He said, shut it up, seal it, don't write it. Not for you. And we have many more in the book of Daniel, especially in Daniel 12. You'll find more similarities like that. So, John is making, John is getting similar vision of what was given in the Tanakh. Amen? So, this is the foundation for us to understand the scriptures. Okay, so we go chapter 10 verse 5 and 6 in revelation now let's read it together now it says and the angel which i saw stand upon the sea we said that that was yeshua already just jesus yeshua and 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 upon the earth lifted up his hand to heaven and swear by him that liveth forever who created i i highlighted those words because remember we said that the, whenever we want to show that god is the creator of heaven and earth we always say that he's the creator of everything and that is only found in the Sabbath commandment 
For he created heaven and earth. Yes, ma'am. 10, 5, 6. Yes. Yes. He sweared by him, live it forever and ever, who created the heaven and the earth. Sorry, who heaven and the things that are therein, and the earth and the things that are therein are, and the sea and the things which are therein, and there should be time no longer. So this angel is coming down and said, Nah, there's no time no longer. And we are coming. So I wonder, since he said that, I wonder if he told John the seven thunders uttered the time when Yeshua was going to come. We don't know. Okay. So we are not speculating. But because this verse said there shall be time no longer. Say, okay, don't write it. Yeah. All right. No, we're not going to speculate. We leave it alone. Okay. So let's see. So that there shall be time no longer. That's what the angel said. No, the now, we said that the angel that stand on the land and the sea was Yeshua. So, if it is Yeshua, why is he swearing um, by him that liveth forever and ever? Why is he making an oath? Some people say that. So, why is Yeshua making an oath of himself? So, it has to be another. It can't be Yeshua. It must be another angel swearing to God. Ah. Ah. That's, amen. Amen. Come on. Give her the mic. Give her the mic. Repeat what you said. This I was just saying that, well, people talk a lot about God Almighty, God, God Almighty, but He's sovereign too, meaning that He can do as He please. Of course. So He, he can be Himself making the oath to I, Himself if course. He wanted to. Amen. He, Amen. Can, swear, he can swear to Himself. Hallelujah. And we have a scripture for that. Amen. That's exactly where I was going. He can swear by Himself. Let's go. Let's see the next, next screen. He can swear by Himself. Amen. See, back in Genesis, when God promised Abraham to bless and multiply him, he also took an oath. Yeah, uh huh. That's what we're saying. All right. And in Hebrews chapter 6, 17 and 18, explains why. So we're going to read Hebrews 6, 17 and 18. It says, Hello? Okay. It says, Wherein God willingly, more abundantly, to show unto the hearers of promise. The immutability of his counsel confirm it by an oath as God that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie we might have a strong consolation who have fled for a refuge to lay all upon him the hope is set before us. So here God swore by himself so he can swear by himself. He swear by him that liveth forever and ever. Amen? So the Lord can swear by himself because he says um for it is impossible for God to lie. So if you, if you, if I am God, but I'm going to swear to let you know I'm swearing by myself because I can't lie. Amen? So that's why that, that angel we say is Yeshua. is still in line with the principles of God taking a hold. Amen? All right, so we move on. We're coming to the meat of it now. But in the days, verse 7, Revelation 10, 7, it says, but in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, now, we didn't touch the seventh angel, which is the seventh trumpet. We, we finished six. Six was finished in Revelation 9. He didn't touch the seventh trumpet until Daniel, until Revelation 11, which we're going to do next week, right? It says, in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, it, it, it's not sounding yet, it says, shall, the mystery of God should be finished as he had declared to his servants, the prophets. All right? The mystery of God should be finished. So what is the mystery of God? Anybody know? And we quote a scripture. The Bible always talks about some mystery. What is a mystery? Anybody knows the mystery? Somebody says it's kingdom. Okay, somebody says that it's Alpha and Omega. That's a mystery in itself. The first and the last. The beginning and the end. People are always wondering where God comes from and all those things. And we don't know when he's going to come back. That's going to be a mystery. They're all correct but let's see what the bible say confirm everything about what we just said okay let's move on what is the mystery of man of yah of yahweh all right colossians 1 26 and 27 says let's read together it says even the mystery which had been hid from ages and from generations but now is made manifest to his saints to whom god would make known what is the riches of the glory of his mystery among the gentiles which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Eh? Most people don't know that. He says he's going to make the gospel foolishness to those who don't believe. It's like foolishness. It's like a mystery to them. You know? 
but, the, but the, the fact that God made us and he came and died for us is a mystery in itself. There's another scripture. I don't know if I have it. Yeah, 1 Timothy 3.16. Can someone find that? 1 Timothy 3.16. Talks about a mystery. 1 Timothy 3.16. Again, again, I want to thank those who are watching on online. We are studying the Revelation chapter 10. Having a discussion here. We're looking at the Revelation 10 now. 5 and 6 talks about the mystery of God should be finished. Verse 16, yes. Microphone. Why is what? Yes, somebody's going to read. First Timothy three verse sixteen. I'm going to read. Yeah, First Timothy three sixteen, and uh, beyond all question, the secret of reverence is great. Who was revealed in the flesh, declared right in spirit, was seen by messengers, was proclaimed among nations, was believed on in the world, was taken up in esteem. Maybe yes. somebody want, has a different version. By common confession, great is the mystery of godliness. Right. Uh -huh. He who was revealed in the flesh was vindicated in the spirit seen by angels proclaimed among the nations believed on in the world and taken up right that's the mystery the mystery of godliness god came in the flesh that's a mystery to many people you know they can't understand how god can come without um having human sex to the you know they, they, some people some people reject, yeah, some people reject uh, Messiah because of that. They say, no, it's impossible. I say, oh, why, why is it impossible for God? What are you talking about? You know, I was talking to somebody who is an orthodox mindset, you know, and I, we were talking about this, and he, and he was like, there's no way in hell, that's what he says, that God is going to come without having sex like that. And I said, why? You, you, so that's the God you serve? You don't, he's not powerful? You know? <laughs> Uh-huh. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes, and we and we demonstrated that when we were having our Passover too. Right. Okay. So that's the mystery of God. Amen. And it's still a mystery. Until we get to the kingdom, we can ask him a lot of questions. Amen. Just that we go by faith, we don't know everything. But that's what we do. Amen. So we move on. We're coming to the meat of, 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 of Revelation chapter 10 now. Amen. Okay, this is it now. It says here now, on the voice which I heard, when the seven thunders were there, right? From heaven spake unto me again. And he said, go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel, which stand upon the sea and upon the earth. So this angel will be saying, well, you're sure. He's up on the air, land and the sea and he has a little scroll in his hand. And he says, take the book. We're going to find out what this little book is all about. Amen. Next. And he took on, um, on, on verse 10. I think that's what it is. Uh, let's see. Yes, it says, And he took the, the little scroll from the angel's hand and ate it. I tasted as sweet as honey in his mouth, but when I had eaten it, his stomach turned sour. He said, what is going on here? You know, what kind of book is this? Is giving me to eat. Okay, anyway, we cannot speculate. Again, again, here at the Scripture of Truth, congregation here, we are, we study together. We don't speculate. We go into the Scriptures and try to find the answer. So let's go into the Scriptures here. Again, we said, nothing in the Old, in the New Testament is new. It's coming from the Tanakh, which, we, which people call the Old Testament. Yes. Yes. John. John. Yes. John is the one who is eating in, in vision. He's getting that. 
But we have another example in the scriptures so we can get the understanding of what this is all about, right? So we're not going to speculate and make any assumptions and then let the Bible interpret the scriptures, right? So let's go and see what this is all about now. There, there are two examples in Jeremiah and Ezekiel. Those were prophets too. They had the same experiences. So move on. So that's the scroll in the, in the angel's hand. All right. Ne next. Okay, so in Jeremiah, he had a scroll too. All right. Had the same experience in Jeremiah 15. But we're going to look at verse 16. He says, He said, Thy words were found, and I did eat them, and there was unto me joy and rejoicing of my heart. Right? So the little book we are saying is the word of God. Amen? All right, look at, look at Psalm 190, 103, 104. What does it say? Oh, sweet are thy words unto my taste. Yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through thy precepts I get understanding. Therefore, I hate, I hate every false way. So we are, see, we know Psalm was talking, he was talking about the Torah, right? His laws, right? So we, we can conclude that this little book is the Torah, amen? It's the word of God, the scriptures, amen? It did not include the New Testament yet. Even though John was writing, he could see in the future the New Testament also being included in this scroll. But initially, it's the, it's the Tanakh, the New Testament, the writings, the Psalms. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's coming from the old. Of course, exactly. Okay, so next. So it's Torah and his laws, and we find that in Psalm 19 also talk of the Torah as as sweeter than sweeter than honey. And we're gonna sing that song later on. Where it says, um, more to me desired are they than gold. You know that song? We're going we're gonna to sing that song. So in Psalm 19, we can read more about that sweetness of the word. Amen? So that scroll is his Torah and is his laws. Includes, which includes the commandments, the feast days, and so forth. It did not abolish because John is seeing the angel bringing it to him. And to eat it, and he said it was sweet. But he also said it was bitter. So we have to find out. Yes, he says it was sweet. But once he goes down in his belly, it is bitter. So if it's the word, if it is the word of God, why is it bitter? Next, we're gonna see why. Yes, so we so so we move on. That's the question here now. So if it is if it is the word, why is it bitter? Okay, why bitter? Ezekiel. Let someone read now. Ezekiel, two seven to ten. And David can maybe put it up. Joseph, can you handle the mic? Give it to someone. And David, David, can you put up Ezekiel 2, 7 to 10 while, while they search for it here? Ezekiel 7, so those who are online can see it on the screen while those who are here reading it together. 2, 7 to 10, I think that was the first. Um, and I think Ezekiel 3 is the next one. Let's see, something happened to Ezekiel, similar, and we see what happens here. But you shall speak my words to them, whether they listen or not, for they are rebellious. Seven to ten. Okay. Now you, son of man, listen to what I am speaking to you. Do not be rebellious like that rebellious house. Open your mouth and eat what I am giving See you. See that? The same thing? He said, open your mouth, eat what I'm giving you. He's giving him the word. Then, then I looked, and behold, a hand was extended to me, and lo, a scroll was in it. When he spread out before me, it was written on the front and back, and written on it was lamentations, mourning, woe. Uh huh. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Yes. Yes. The, the, sometimes the Lord gives people words to. It's nice, but he knows the people is going to rebel. So it, it, it appears it becomes bitter. Amen? So let's, the next one is Ezekiel 3. So here Ezekiel was told to eat something too. Right? And the Lord said, don't worry. Don't feel sad. 
I know they are rebellious, but you have to you have to say what I give to you. Yes. Next one was what? Ezekiel 3? Okay. I guess he's coming up with that on the screen here. So we see the same thing happening with Jeremiah and Ezekiel and John have the same experience. Nothing new under the sun, that's what we're saying. Amen. So we're looking at looking for Ezekiel chapter 3. What's my verse? That's my verse for Ezekiel 3. Uh, okay, Ezekiel 3, 1 to 3 and verse 14. Okay. 1, 2, 3, yes. Ezekiel 3, 1, 2, 3, yes. Okay, here's another one again. This one is good. It says, let's read together. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, eat that thou findest. Eat this roll. It's the same scroll. They call it roll. And go speak to the house of Israel. All right? So I opened my mouth, and he caused me to eat that roll. Similar experience with John. Nothing new. Yes? And he said unto me, Son of man, cause thy belly to eat, and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then I eat it, and it was in my mouth as honey. Same thing. As sweetness. Okay, verse 14 now. So the Spirit lifted me up, and took me away, and I went in what? Bitterness. In the heat of my spirit, but the hand of the Lord was strong upon me. Because he knows the people are not going to listen to the words. So here, the words we know are sweet, but there are people who are not going to want to accept the word. So, like us here, when we try to talk to people, and they don't want to listen to the words, we, we become disappointed. Uh, you know, they don't want to hear it. It's sweet for us, but it's bitter when the people reject. As the Lord is saying, this is the word. Do not be discouraged, he's saying. To, to John, he said, do not be discouraged. We're going to see it now. Okay, so we know the little book is the word. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, he dropped, he dropped a piece of wood in the water, right? And it became... Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Turn sweet. That story with it when he dropped the it's in it has to be in has to be in number somewhere when he was re reviewing yeah. Or yeah, Exodus numbers, those two books, one of those two books. Yeah. Yes, in Exodus, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's how it goes every time you read the scriptures the more you get the more understanding amen okay so we see why we see why it was bitter in his mouth because it's not because um you make a false prediction and you're disappointed in the false prediction you know some people make false predictions and it don't come through and they become disappointed and they want to say that's the bitterness no the bible says it's because the people will not hear the word the true word, then we know the prophet is bitter. It becomes bitter to him because the people won't react to it. And so the Lord says, do not worry. People are going to be like that. And so let's see you now. Let's go on. Move on now. So in verse 11, it says, Then he told him, You must prophesy again about many peoples, nations, language, and kings. Don't worry. You're still going to have to go to people and teach the word. Amen? So that's what Revelation is talking about. And that's what Revelation 10 is all about. He says he opened the book. It's sweet and it's bitter. And he's preparing us for what is to come in Revelation chapter 11 and onwards. Amen. Okay, so at this time we're going to sing a nice song which talks about the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Amen. Nice song talking about the sweetness of the word and of the laws of God. The law of God is not abolished. It is here in Revelation 10. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> The love of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple person. Sing the next verse. The statutes of the Lord are right. 
coming from Psalm 19. You know that? Yeah, okay, turn to Psalm 19. Those who are online, that song is coming from Psalm 19. Those who don't know it. Psalm 19, you're going to close off with looking at that again. Those who didn't know, Psalm 19. 19, 1-9. One 1-9. Nine. One nine. Starting from verse 7, that's where they're coming from. You can, we, we can read it. What they do, what they do, verse 10 is the chorus. So they go back, so they, so they, will, they start from verse 7. They will sing verse 7, then they go to verse 10. Then they sing verse 8, go to verse 10. Verse 9, go to verse 10. And then he did, and then he did verse 14, which is let the word of my mouth. You see that? Yeah, 7, the law of the Lord is perfect. So if you're reading that, you'll, you'll see the same song. Law of the Lord is perfect. Amen. Amen. So, so, any questions so far? That's Revelation ten. So we're almost halfway into Revelation chapter, into the book of Revelation. Next week we're gonna do Revelation chapter ten. Amen. Eleven. Sorry, eleven. Mm -hmm. Ezekiel and Jeremiah. Jeremiah, Ezekiel. No, John, Ezekiel, and Jeremiah. Yes. Yes. The word, yes. It, it, it was sweet and then it became bitter, yes. Right. Yes, 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 yes. Right, that's what it is. Amen. All right, so this time we're going to stand and we're going to do a special blessing for the lunch. We're going to bless the bread and the wine. Okay, so we do a special blessing and then we will have something to eat. And those who are watching, we see you next week, same time, 11.30, 11.45, thereabouts. Amen. Okay, so we go together. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Amotse Lechem Min HaRetz Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the Universe who brings forth bread from the earth. Amen. And Yeshua, we know, is the bread of life. That's what we're talking about today, with the word. Amen. And so he gave us something to drink now. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Aholam Bore Pri Agafen Blessed are you, our God, King of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. And we know that we are the branches and Yeshua is the vine. Amen. So we have to think unto him and we will continue to produce more juice. Amen. At this time now we're going to do the ironic benediction. Amen. Isa Adonai Panavaleka Veya Samaleka Shalom
May Yahweh bless you and keep you. May Yahweh make his face to shine upon you. May Yahweh lift up his countenance upon you and fill you with peace. Shalom is peace. Amen. Shabbat shalom. And those who are watching, see you again next week. Goodbye, good day, good night, good afternoon. Buenas tardes, buenos dias. Amen.